Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 24, volume 2 of Big Fan. My name is Chad East, and tonight, or today's episode, I am not a big fan of Daylight Savings Time, watering my grass when leaves fall on it for the last three weeks, and fantasy football losses when you stay up all night and end up getting beat by half of a point. My name's Hank Eimer, and I'm a big fan I'm not a fan. I'm a big fan. Got it. Savoring the last few innings of the major league season. Mm -hmm. Walking into 10-year skill assessments with your chest pressed out knowing you have the first pick. (laughs) What a feeling. Eating Halloween candy from your boy's stash without him even knowing it's gone. Mm. Big fan. Yes, sir. Very well. Very well, Hank. Well, man, I'm so glad to be back here in the Big Fan Studios. It's been about a month since i've been here last yep had furniture market the last couple of weeks you know all kind of, i'm a i'm a business man you know what i'm saying so i'm here and there i'm everywhere just trying to make sure things are. happen you know you know what i'm going going with well anyway i do want to say before we get going is i want to say a, a special thank you to moose who filled in so admirably last week for thank me, you because uh, you know when you sit in this chair you sit in the Chatty's chair. That is a big chair to sit in. You know what I'm saying? I think we so, talked about that. Yeah, I haven't even listened to the episode. I'm sure it was spectacular. Not. And this is why I'll tell you. Last week, I received not one, not five, not ten, not twenty texts. And let me just read a few of these, okay? I can't wait. For my loyal listeners. First one, WTF, okay? Second one, Lord what is going on here? Okay. <laughs> Third, please, Chad, make it stop. <laughs> Fourth, this is my favorite. After that episode, I think I'm suffering from PTA, PSTD for the rest of my life. Was that the Vietnam War? <laughs> that's what, that's what I heard. Those are the texts I got from our loyal listeners. Now, granted, I'm sure it wasn't Moose's fault. I'm sure Moose did a spectacular he job. He did. He did a great I'm job. i put this all on. You, Hank Heimer. So, Tell me what happened. So, Chad, I'll tell you what happened. You had some nice texts from the five people that listened to the show to hear you. So, congratulations. Oh, yes, you heard yes. from your fans. Congratulations. Yes, thank you very you much. You know, I think uh, you should listen to the episode and I give will. us your thoughts on it. I will check Okay, it. I know you're busy. Yeah. But um, we had a good time when we were in here. And you know the biggest thing is? What's that? Is I told our loyal listeners that I didn't change seats. We all know where the captain's chair is here. <laughs> all right? So the guest, that's the guest that's seat. The, is that right? That's Hank? the guest seat you right there. You want to call Addison Fox back into the studio and kick you right out of that captain's yeah, seat? You that's your, your captain's uh, seat. You can, you can have him. Okay. All right? You can have him. Yes. But oh. Let's just agree that's good to be back together. It is. It does feel, feel good to be back here sharing thoughts. Right. Right. It does. You know? yes. It does. So since we just talked about possibly the worst big fan episode of all time let's focus on a couple other worst things of all time hank are you ready top five hank's hierarchy let's go here let's jump right in let's jump number one let's go worst song of all time all okay right? let's go we'll start with you hank worst song of all time i'm gonna go tom's diner <laughs> do you know what that song is sing it for me no i don't i can't remember here, but i'm playing it do, oh. do, 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 I was walking in the diner, and then it's it's an awful song. Okay, it's by like Susan Vega. I think I think you're right. Come on, that's an awful song. But I will listen to it every time it comes on the radio. I know you will. You know exactly. You know, sing right along, and I'll sing with it. You know, she was checking her umbrella. It's so stupid. Doesn't like there's no rhyme to it. But I'm sure like Moose is like, oh, it's a wonderful. Oh, he plays that at Tap Room every Saturday night. Yeah, it's a wonderfully done song. But how about you? What's your worst? This one, buddy. This is a no-brainer for me. Let's see if I can get it to play. This is a 1987 classic that uh, a band by the name of Chumbawamba. Awful. Chumbawamba. I already know where you're going with it. And it's, for some reason, it's not playing. But you. Oh, here it comes. No, that's not, that's it. not it. That's not it. That's Where, not it's it. tub thumping. Tub thumping. Yes, but I wanted to hear the terrible. Here, this is how it starts. I get knocked down, but I get up again. 
you're never going to keep me down. Uh, it's right? an awful. It's an awful song. It's a pretty terrible song, but that's the worst song I think of all time. Um, 1987, Chumbawamba, Tump Thumpy. Okay. okay. Thank you. Let's go to move into the, immediately into the worst movie of all time. Staying on the, the, the genre of worst of all time right. because of the episode that I missed, right? The, okay. the big fan episode I missed two all weeks right. ago. I really don't like where this is going and headed in the, the dark cloud that you're putting over our episode, right, Moose? <laughs> I was I was proud of your performance, and I hate. <laughs> he said that's BS. Yeah, I know it is. It is BS. <laughs> but if you want to go with movies, when you talk, you kind of were talking through yours while you were mm. writing, and I heard it, and it kind of shares a similar theme with mine, and you'll get it when I say it. Yes. Worst movie ever. It's got to, and it's got a huge following, and mm. I I don't know if that means there's more idiots out there than I give credit to. Probably so. Sharknado. <laughs> Yeah, have which episode one or nine? I know? think I think the last one has to be the dumbest. I remember that there's. Have you a, seen them all? No, oh. no, I haven't seen any of them. I, but I did <laughs> see one like on Shark Week. There was one. It was like. Ian Ziering was in yes, one? he's the star. He's the, he's star. the star. That star. should tell you. I don't think he was caught up in the tornado and eaten by a shark until Sharknado 7. So I think he made it through seven of them. Then they had to get someone to replace Ian. Is this a Midwest problem? <laughs> you know, like, is this... It's t- a tornado alley. Tornado, tornado alley, alley is where it happens. <laughs> okay, they suck him in from the Gulf. Yes, exactly. Okay, well, that's got to be the top. Yeah, worst movie of all time. I stayed on the shark theme with my worst movie of all time, which is funny, or maybe ironic, however you want to look at it but my favorite movie or top three is jaws one right right the worst movie is jaws four now remember the premise of jaws four the mother of the kids and the the wife of the dude who went out in jaws one to kill the big jaws the big big shark travels to she she moves all over the place because she thinks the shark is following her so she moves to the bahamas guess who shows up on the shore cruising around staring at her waiting her waiting for her to dip her toe into the ocean jaws four right jaws jaws grandson jaws grandson whoever it is jaws cousins uncle's grandson then where does she move to she moves to india sri lanka sri lanka (laughs) goes out looks she walks out to the little pier she looks out guess who's out there swimming around (laughs) then she decides "Uh uh-uh i ain't having it i'm going somewhere where i know charles cannot get me the pyramids (laughs) she moves to kansas (laughs) she goes to kansas Guess who knocked on her door? <laughs> <laughs> right up the Mississippi, right? Is that where that right guy up came? the Mississippi. Came right up the Delta. Comes Jaws' grandson's cousin, right up there looking for it. So I'm telling you, if you get a chance, don't watch this movie. I won't it watch is that movie. So terrible. Yeah, and, so. and you know, the funny thing is, is you know, the shark, sharks are terrifying animals, right? Yes. But you put them in a different situation and they're hilarious. <laughs> And you know the Saturday Night Live yes. skit where the do- where they're in the apartment and the person is scared of the shark attack and it gets the knock at the door and it's like housekeeping <laughs> and they refuse to go to the door is genius. It's absolutely yes, genius because the shark's out there waiting. I mean, they must have seen Jaws four to come up with that skit. Do you know right. what I mean? Oh, right. it's so great. All right, Hank. Uh, let's move on to our next uh, topic of worst ever. Let's go to worst TV show. Got worst one. TV show. Got one. I don't know if it's because I'm kind of like jaded because I'm in the real estate business, you know, like that's mm-hmm. my profession, but I cannot stand the property brothers. Yeah. Two smug sons of a guns. Right? Yeah. I cannot stand that show. And many people, you just took my list of things. <laughs> I'm going to give it back. Many people, I'm giving it back to you. many people are, are just drawn to them yes. and they have this expert status and I think that they're terrible. Yeah. So, um, do you ever watch the show? Like, have you seen... I think HGTV is the bane of my <laughs> profession. Really? Yes. I'm going to stay on that theme. I think my show comes on the Food Network. I'm looking for it right now. I don't see it here, but it's either Food Network or uh, Bravo, but it's Cake Wars. Any show that you're making cakes and battling other people... I'm not down with that. I don't like sweets, and I don't like violence. Cake wars? Do you see where I'm going here? I'm out. <laughs> That's a terrible analogy. <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you very much. Yeah, Good okay, I get it. Cake, war- wars, Cake awful. wars, awful. Terrible. Awful. All right, staying in. Uh, this is your topic that you actually brought up. Work, worst clothing trends. Oh, yeah. This is great. I would have never come up with this. Go for it, Hank. Worst clothing trends. Without a doubt, mesh shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and when have you when I did think the, in the 80s the, the mesh know. shirt was very you hot Billy Idol I do remember a Billy Idol video where he was rocking a mesh shirt on top of a building yeah 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're it's the about rebel, yeah. <laughs> something like that. It's yeah. something like that. But you know, they were great when you'd see a girl. She's got like a corset on, you know. You know but those shirts found their way to the gentleman that's sixty pounds overweight, <laughs> and they looked like you know it was like kind of like a football jersey, I but a real it. T-shirt. Yeah, I feel it what just you're wasn't. It, it wasn't a good yeah. look. Yeah. How about you? Um, this this trend only lasted for a brief minute, and one of our friends. P.D. King tried to bring it back in the early 2000s. Uh-oh. It was big my, like, eighth grade, ninth grade year. It was clam diggers for guys. Do you remember there was jams? Oh, yeah. And then the jams went longer where they were past the knee, almost down to the ground, but sure not did. like a pant. They were kind of rolled up. So they Chance. Were a, sh- a clam digger is <laughs> yeah. what people call them. So anyway, I remember I had a pair, and I wore them one time, and I got joked out, so we'd never wore them again, but... Petey rocked him at a wedding within the last decade. Good for him. Yeah, we you were all that looking is? at him like confidence. Yeah, you know what? He wore them very well, but he hasn't worn them since. No, right? Yes, he will so not. Anyway, worst clothing trend: clam diggers for guys, mesh shirts for guys for you. And last but not least, following in the Halloween atmosphere because we're coming to you live October 29th, two days before the most festive, uh, haunting day of the year, Hank. Worst Halloween candy of all time. Not not even a not even to have to like pose the question. No questions asked. Candy corn. And guess what I have on my list, Hank? <laughs> candy corn. Candy corn. It's yes. the worst. Yes. And I I personally it kind of like I I would much rather have a Starburst or a Twizzler or something that's that resembles plastic. You know what I mean? Opposed to like chocolate. Mm-hmm. I'd rather do that. Candy corn is in that family and it sucks. You like a Twizzler? I love a Twizzler. <laughs> Twizzlers and candy corn to me because they're waxy. Yeah, I can't. I can't do it. No, I like Twizzlers. I think candy corn sucks, and I refuse to eat it. If, if it were, it's kind of like sweet tea. I'd mm-hmm. rather choke to death than drink sweet tea. Question: Those old peppermint mints that were in your grandma's candy drawer versus candy corn. What would you eat? Peppermint mint. You'd go for the peppermint mint over the candy corn. It's been sitting in there for forty-eight years. You don't care. <laughs> you don't care. It's been sitting in this little dish for forty-eight years. You're still gonna eat it. I can't stand the candy corn. <laughs> Wow, candy corn. Mm. Get better, buddy. Get better. Anyway, hey, bud. You got through Hank's hierarchy. Top five worst of all time. Good work. Thank you. Let's stay on Halloween, Hank. Okay. Okay, you know this is a, a big, big time here in Hickory, North Carolina. We've got haunted houses. You know, they houses, also do this outside of Hickory as well, right? They do <laughs> do it. Big, it's a big event, I guess, in the entire it's world. It's not a Hickory yes, holiday. but <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> we sure treat it like here in Hickory, North Carolina, with all the parties and the festivities and the hay rides and the... You know what I'm saying. I hear you. So this is how it kicks off at my house. My wife has had her costume plan for nine months, brother. Nine months. Does anybody know what it is? There's a, I know what it is, and a couple girls know what it is because they're doing something together. So nine months in the works. Can we share this? We cannot. This is because there's a party this weekend. It's got to be a surprise. So nine months planning. Lucy Rose plans she had it for three weeks, got her costume. She's been, we've been doing dress rehearsals and stuff at the house. Pretty big deal at the East House. Lucy, Olivia ordered hers online Monday. It showed up, what is today? Wednesday. Wednesday. It showed up, I guess, today. Two-day shipping. She doesn't really, she's not very fond of Halloween like her mother and her sister are. Doesn't care. Not really. Me, don't even have a costume yet, Hank. Why would you? I, it, I, it'll just pop, it'll just come to me. It'll just come to me, right? Let's talk about costumes your house and then i'll hit you with the next schedule of uh, events for halloween so you are, are you asking are, are we not disclosing what these i know she can i know your wife can yes. and i understand that are you disclosing what your kids are yes yeah, so lucy rose is an alien but with this really it's not like a scary alien it's like a cheerleader alien you know what i'm saying okay you okay know going? yeah so it's got a little antenna. friendly friendly alien, alien. lights everywhere um right. Green makeup and eyeliners and stuff, yes. Okay. Olivia is a chicken. So she, for since she was three, she's always dressed up like an animal. Yep. You I've know, seen her. You've seen her. I've she's seen been her. like a, a... Flying squirrel. A flying squirrel. She's been a squid. She's been a, a a platypus. She's been... What's the things with... She's been a porcupine. Yeah. She's been a dragon. Yep. Um, but she's a chicken this year, so she's staying with that theme. And, you know, again... It's just going to come to me. When right. my costume comes to me, it will just hit me. 
and I'll be ready to go. Right. So what's what's going on at your house? So there is some thought into it. In years past, you know, little boys go through the ninja stage, yeah. and then they go through, like, the, the the werewolf. They want to be the werewolf, whatever. Well, the past few years, Harris has kind of been drawn to kind of like a – a funnier costume like he's been sriracha sauce Fabulous. right yeah. and stuff like that so this year i was like what do you want to be and he said he wanted to be a pro wrestler <laughs> okay perfect speaking of which before you move on is there a picture of hulk Hogan on the back of your tahoe no what, what is that a picture no of? no no, no. Is that, that randy randy the macho man savage no that's rick flair okay and if you look in his sunglasses what he's referencing is i have a sticker on the back of my window that some of our good friends at capital Co- i mean not at capital Co- at uh sign systems did for me okay that has rick flair's face yelling woo yes and it says Cole Banker in his sunglasses. Oh, that's very creative. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of far away from you, but I, I knew it was a wrestler. Yeah, this couldn't it was make Ric Flair. Was. Okay, okay, very good. Go ahead. So, so Harris said that he wanted to be a wrestler. And so I was like, are you going to be a new wrestler? I don't really know, you know those guys. I know all the old guys. Macho Man Randy Savage. Boom. One of the best. One of the best. Yes. So he's got his costume. He's got the long hair, the bandana, the savage glasses, yeah. a shirt that says it. He what? To, yesterday he said, "Dad, I wish we would have found pink tidy whities so I could have worn those." <laughs> would he have rocked those? He said he would have. He's gonna wear tights, wear tights tonight. Underneath. No, oh, he's yes. gonna wear tights tonight. That's it. No, he's gonna wear the tidy whities Just but bang them. Confident kid here. Bang them around. Confident kid. So um, who's Miss Elizabeth? <laughs> I asked. I was reckoning if she was gonna wear a sequins dress to be Miss Elizabeth. So he's going as that. Okay, yes. Reagan will not dress up because we're not going to a party, you know, this weekend. Yeah. Um, but I have a party at my office. Mm-hmm. Okay, and it's we're going to do it on Thursday, and I provide lunch and everything else. So I bought one of those inflatable T Rex because I would have loved it if people came in and I was typing on my computer <laughs> in that thing. But yes. it is not built for me. Right. It is like. It, it is so narrow. Like, it's fat guy in a little coat yes. kind of deal. And so if I would have bust, it would have busted out. So um, I have a uniform, I have a, uh, a referee's outfit, like a legit referee's outfit. And I think I'm going to rock that and blow the whistle and throw flags, flags. on view. Make sure you throw a lot of Erica. Yeah. Yep. Right. Boom, boom, so boom. I think that that's where I'm going with. Perfect. But, you know, it might come, something different may come up. You never know. You might never be know. Sherlock Holmes. You never know. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's, let's stay on the wrestling thing. So... Were you ever a big wrestling fan? I enjoyed wrestling. Were you WWF or were you like NWA? You know, so I'm older than you. It, so. It's WCW, first of all. It, it, and it, it, WWF. When I grew up, it was different. So It wasn't NWA. That was later. No. Yes. Arn Anderson and Ric Flair and Magnum all those guys TA. were WCW. Dude, they came, that was after NWA. NWA was first. No. We'll, we'll worry about kindergarten. It du- could be earlier than that. Dusty Rhodes. Dusty Rhodes. Dude, that's what I was into. Okay. I was, WWF was just too big because you'd only get to see it like after Saturday Night Live. Late. Yes, it came late. Every once in a while. Uh, but the... RNA, the Four Horsemen, mm-hmm. Rock and Roll Express. Yes. Um, who else was in there? It uh, was Midnight Express, and then Midnight there was Express. Ron, the Hands of Stone Garvin. <laughs> Gardner. 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 It was it Garvin? Garvin? It was Garvin. Yes. It was Chief Wahoo McDaniel. I Dusty think he Rhodes. was in there. Um, Dusty and T- uh, Magnum were tag team partners. Was, yes. And actually, my kindergarten or first grade year, Will Rowland was a big fan. So his mom drove us to Fred T. Ford, where they had the the squared circle set up in the mm-hmm. middle of the gym and I saw Magna TA and Tully Blanchard and Dusty Rhodes and the Rock and Roll Express. That's pretty awesome. Can you imagine a I, first grade's mind just being blown at Fred T. Ford seeing these fantastic athletes. I have <laughs> I have a signed uh, picture of the four horsemen. Wow. And a friend of ours, Andy Banks, got it for me because she was somewhere like some work thing or mm-hmm. right and she said can you can you sign this for me and she told me that the guy was like oh how young's your son or something like that she's like it's for my friend and he was like <laughs> He's sad <40> years old <laughs> sad i was so excited when i got it oh uh, one just wrestling memory besides actually my favorite wrestling memory is when i came home i think i might have been in sixth grade and i was coming back from grandview and this is my brother and his friend chase hodges when i say we're into wrestling i mean they were into wrestling. I come home, drop my book bag off, walk downstairs. We had a pool, and I walked down to the pool, and Jeremy and Chase are dressed up like the Rock and Roll Express. <laughs> this is on a random Tuesday. Halloween's not even in the picture. We're talking about we're in, it's April. It's Tuesday. Dressed up head to toe, Rock and Roll Express, practicing what they would say to the television to camera, camera and what moves they were going to do. I mean, 
They had all the Whoa. bandanas. They had bandanas everywhere talking like them. It was unbelievable. That is unbelievable. Big fans. But my favorite wrestling on TV moment was the first WrestleMania. So it was WWF. And this is when, like, Randy the Macho Man Savage, Andre the Giant, Hulk Hogan, Coco Beware, uh, and Ricky the Dragon Stebo, who was yep. my favorite. He fought he great. Randy the Macho Man Savage. It was a tremendous match. But anyway, that was WrestleMania 1. That... Dude, that's over 20, that's almost 30 years ago. Yeah, I know. Hard to believe. Hard to, Hard believe. to believe. Macho Man, I've got Harris practicing the, his what he says. Yes. And so it's funny because I'll be like in my bedroom and I'll hear him walking down the hall and he'll be going, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's going to be perfect. What are his buddies doing? Are they going to be wrestling uh, guys too? No, or? I don't know what they're doing. Max is yeah. going to be uh, a ping pong pro yes. a professional ping pong player um you know there's some i don't know what they're all going to be yeah so it's but be fun. it'll be fun that that group of boys there's four or five of them that to get together that are just dumb yeah dumb 10 year olds well halloween starts officially tonight here in hickory because there is a dress up party for the kids tonight i think it's yep. at lake hickory yep and then tomorrow night at all the churches, it's the trunk or treats. So you go from church to church, and everybody's got their trunks decorated and stuff. That's always really good. Thursday night, it is the big night. The event. It is the event of all events. And here. you go to Sixth Street. I go to Sixth Street and you know prepare just to see all kinds of craziness out there as normal. But what if it rains? Let's talk about this. Have Let's you talk been, about it. Have you been through a Halloween where? There was a rain out where you just decided, hey, we ain't going out. Scrap did it. Just, did you scrap it or did you put on your rain gear over costume and go tough it out? We're talking about when we're little. When we're little? Yeah. No rain was going to keep me from banging on a door. Yes, so exactly. I would go. Yes. Right now, 43 years old, <laughs> right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my best salesman on to yeah. my son and tell him that bowl of candy right there. It's yours, son. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Yeah. If we don't have to step foot out in that tsunami right, <laughs> right. now. Right. So uh, I don't know. Let's see what he, uh, what he wants to do. But Forecast. I'll, I'll go. 40% rain this Thursday. I did, it was higher than that last time I looked. It's coming down a little bit. <laughs> who are you? Chad down. Sprinkle? That's what I'm going. My, that's my, might be who I dress over Halloween. Chad Larry's, Sprinkle. <laughs> Chad Sprinkle. Sprinkle? Yes. Okay, Chad. Uh, so anyway, hopefully the rain will hold off, and then there's a couple Halloween parties this weekend too, so for the more adult targeted, you know, and that's where I'm, I'm going to break out my costume, and Jennifer's going to break hers out too. You know, she has three costumes. She's wearing a costume tonight that's different than the main one. She's wearing one for trunk or treat that's different than the first one, and then she has one. No, then she has one to walk the streets of 6th Street. Then she has her final one for the party. Is, That's four costumes. Is this her favorite holiday? By far. Nothing even close. Nothing even close to this holiday for her. She loves it so. Four outfits? Four costumes. She I wear think. these to work? Like she get all, you know, get <laughs> no, all day she, in them? She will wear, on Halloween, it's the, the day of Halloween, she will dress up. Right. Probably she'll choose one of her four. One of the four. Yeah, one of the four. But she's going to keep the one under wraps. That's going to be the, the secret, the secret one in it's pretty good. Is it? It's pretty awesome. Okay. I can't wait to see all of them together in their gear. It's going to be good. Um, but anyway, let me tell you a couple of things that's, that have happened to uh, us over the last week, Hank. We started basketball season. We did. For our kiddos. It's right upon us. So soccer, baseball, winding down. Basketball, whoosh, right in front of us. Yep. We had our tryout yesterday. And tonight, right? And, and tonight. tonight. Tryouts today. Last night and tonight we have our draft on Wednesday. And I heard maybe little LeBron walked into the gym at your tryout yesterday. I get the first pick. Yeah. Going 0-10 mm. last year gives me the first pick. Now, we were young. We had one yeah. person. We had all nine-year-olds come back. But guess who's getting ready to get good, <laughs> quick, your boy here. Get LeBron on the team. We got, Franchise player. We got a kid that's going to make everybody <laughs> better. Including this team. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, people were talking about him before he even came in. And he goes to school with Harris, so yeah. I know him. And he's, he is a great athlete. He's a great kid, great family. And um, But he's something special on a basketball court to the point where one of the coaches oh, here we go. tried to give me a sob story that he'd been coaching him for the last few years and he'd grown a bond with him and he re really wanted to be with him. I was like, I don't care if you're his daddy. <laughs> He's on my team. Yes. I don't care because yes. I need some victories. Right. Right. And how ruthless this coaching gets. I mean, that coach 
He that's he's selling you this sob story. Oh, he's you know I really I've coached in the last Bonded. few years. I really need him. This bond we've created. Come on, coach. You're just trying to win ball games. I, you know that's what he's doing. And I told him I said I appreciate you coaching him up to where he is. Yeah, I appreciate that. But he's mine now. <laughs> he is mine. Well, and you know the good thing, the, the funny thing is, is we were talking to the coaches and they look at their draft list. I've got five kids returning. Yes, right? oh, that's good. Yeah, which is good. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to pick. One in the first, one in the second, one in the third, then I'm out. Right. Right? Same for me. I got five returners, three picks. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, the, where you really hand, handcuff your team and hurt it, round six, yeah. seven, eight, nine, you get hurt. Happens. Happens. Get hurt. So, um, I'm looking forward to having uh, this team this year because last year we deserve some Ws. Yep. Yeah, so we had a rough year too. So, we had the second overall pick. So, we'll be in the same kind of uh, – uh, same shape as you. We, I've already so we've done a little scout scouting. I'm, I draft against one of our fellow friends and known as possibly one of the worst coaches of all time, C.J. Hines. He's not. He's not possibly known. He is the Definitely. worst coach. Can, worst coach. Give you give some our listeners some statistics of C.J.'s coaching prowess. Okay, so this year, well, let's just start over. So he is like zero wins in his first like four seasons or anything he's ever soccer done. basketball you right. name it zero wins right he yes. won he won his first game in well his team won their first game probably three years ago in soccer and it was the day that he didn't show up to the game and their <laughs> assistant coach coach and they won that wonderful That's okay super. is that not wonderful That's great so he has gone just a long time without winning and last basketball season i think he won a couple i think he beat me and he beat Unfortunately, you he beat me, and he yes. beat you we had an but off, off game all, over the last three years i do not know if you know this or not but over the last three years i have sponsored a little girl's soccer team in his age group <laughs> so that i can beat him once a year. Y'all are really true friends. Yes. Once a year. <laughs> the Cole Banker Boyden Hassel Tigers beat his team again this year. And I love it. I love so it. Wonderful. Lou knows from the wreck. She yes. knows every year she can call, count on me <laughs> to sponsor one team so I can put my name above the yeah. sign systems team. <laughs> so great. It is great. Yes. That's what's great about sports. So, yes. Um, he's the worst coach of all time. Yes, thank you. Well, and I'm, he's going to ruin – he will mess up on the draft. So if you have picked two you, or three – he drafts one because his team was terrible, a little bit more terrible than my team was last year. So he drafts in front of me. I was so I had my, all my assistant coaches there last night. We're scouting the scouting the players. You know, this is serious business. CJ's down there. I don't think he's got a pencil, a piece of paper, anything. He's just he's like, "What you think, Chad?" I'm like, "You're not taking notes, CJ. You're not making any notes." He was like, "Nah, I just have a feeling." I'm <laughs> like, "You stick with that feeling, bro. I'm drafting behind you. It's gonna be just like." He's going to be just dropping crumbs to me, these big, huge crumbs, and I just pick them up, and we go to the championship. Yep. You know how it yeah, goes. Yeah, I know. He's getting, Listen, it's embarrassing. <laughs> it's embarrassing that he's friends with us. I really is. I, I'm, I'm kind of getting to the point where I've got to question my own like sanity to want to hang out with him because yeah. he is taking losing to another level. To a whole other level. whole yes. new level. Yeah. A whole new level. And you know what? He does it with such grace. <laughs> that class. He, yeah, in class. In class, yes. That he deserves it. He deserves these to L's. He does. Well, anyway, I will look forward to it. I love sitting beside him in the draft room, too. You haven't got to experience this, I don't think. No. So I, I coach against him in soccer and basketball. So we're in the draft room. You know, you can see him. Like peering <laughs> around looking at people's, uh, like, like high notes. school. You know, everybody's notes like, hey, hey. Number nine, how'd she dribble? Number ten, is she good? <laughs> because he's got like a blank sheet of paper in front of him. No yeah. notes. Anyway, it's going to be awesome. Draft tomorrow night. We'll let y'all know in a couple weeks how we did. Hey, let me tell you something. So we're leaving the draft, uh, leaving a skill assessments. It was me and another coach last night and Lou. This guy comes walking in and he was like, you guys got it tomorrow, but my son can't make it tomorrow. And she's like, it's all right. He's, all right. he's on the list. He'll yep. get drafted. And uh, he looks at me and he goes, what picks you got? I said, one. He's like, don't miss out on Randall Williams. Or I think that's what his name yep. Don't miss out on Randall Williams. I was like, is that your boy? He said, yep. I look at that other coach. That coach is like trying to like hone in, you know? Yes, listen, he's like listening in a little notes, bit. Yeah. I said, can he ball? And he's like, he's probably about an eight out of ten. 
And I was like, all right, mm-hmm. all right. Randall Williams. Randall Williams. So we'll see. Hey, that's going to be my flyer. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's my, yes. uh, my uh, number two, second round, third round flyer. There you go. Mm-hmm. We'll Not see. if that other coach scoops him up earlier, though, Hank. Yeah, we'll you know see. We'll see. Well, real quick before we move on, let's read a wonderful message from our wonderful studio here, Hank. Well, you just we do this on every podcast. We try to mention the mesh, and it really comes down to a few bullet points when we start talking about it. And it's, you know, what a great opportunity it is to reach a targeted audience by, you know, each one of these podcasts, by positioning your company or product or whatever it is in the middle of this podcast. It's not really expensive compared to all the other marketing that you may have options to do. Right. Um, we've had several people doing it for this show and other shows. Mm-hmm. And um, I've actually talked to some of them. And they thought that it was a, a, a good marketing for their company. And if you have the need for that, you can go to the mesh.tv um, and uh, they can send you information on it, or you can email info at the mesh TV, and uh, they can, you know, they can give you more information on it. But it is a low cost way of hitting a targeted audience. Certainly, and just to tell our audience how creative these groups, the the people in this mesh studio are. Did you see? The John Reap video clip of the Joker. Did you see it on Facebook? You don't. You don't. No, no, no. I didn't. Moose, you saw this thing, right? Dude, this thing. The production level of this ad. Here, check it out real quick. Our producer Moose is talking to us through the glass, and we're going to put this thing up real quick so you guys can see it. It's John Reap Joker. Okay. So um, while Hank's doing that, I just want to mention. So there's great great podcasts that are happening in here and all the creativity that's happening in all of hickory it's been pretty it's pretty incredible over the last i'd say several years but it's really happening now we've got the city walk kicking into gear we've got all kinds of fun right stuff here. coming into gear here we go and also i'm a ginger <laughs> <laughs> what's not the love about ginger? You know, ginger bread ginger cookies ginger ale <laughs> yeah, ginger that's when you pissed me off <laughs> Ginger from Gilligan's Island. Ginger Island. Beard Island. Man. It's way better than what they call when I said, these kids got it easy with the ginger. This whole time I thought my special was a comedy. I wish it Turns out it's a tragedy. Yes. Okay. special okay yeah anyway so they produced that right here right pretty, pretty awesome. awesome that is pretty, pretty awesome. awesome stuff do you know what i find it funny is the people that want to talk during movies <laughs> kind of like what you just did yeah, yeah you're yeah. like did you see that that's just like the joker look watch this part watch this part watch this part we're watching that yeah, part typically i don't do that but i was uncomfortable in the pot you know i don't know what to do in a podcast should we let comment on what we're seeing to the audience Sometimes you know? less yes. is more. Okay, sometimes. Did you notice at the top of the stairs there's two people looking <laughs> yes. down? What is this city exactly. doing? What exactly? What is going on down here? Yeah. Anyway, uh, awesome job, Mesh Studio, John Reap. Good luck with your um, big show. Not show. 
Yeah, it is. Big show. Special. Special coming up. Yes. So staying on that um, movie trend, look here in the USA Today, the number one movie was The Joker. It's been out three weeks. I think it's done over $150 million. Are you going to go see this movie? I would like to see this movie. Yeah. Do you want to plan a date and then we don't go to it together? <laughs> Just like uh, Godzilla? Yeah. Yes, we could probably do that. Um, I'm not really anxious to see this movie. I heard it's pretty Dark. Yeah, dark, dark. Very dark. Yep. So let's go, not at nighttime, not around Halloween, because you know I have very bad nerves, and I don't like scary things. So maybe the middle of the day, maybe on a, a Wednesday. Tuesday yeah, matinee. Yeah, Tuesday matinee, you know, when it's very sunny outside. We'll go, walk into the Joker, get very depressed, then come out and see the sunshine at least. What do you think? Sounds deadly. Sounds good. Perfect. And then the other top five movies of the oct- week of October 27th, Maleficent. You won't go see, take your son to see that, right? No. I took my girls to see the first one. Not bad. Um, what's the girl's name that was Angelina Jolie? She yeah. is the star. Uh, the Adams Family. Harris and Reagan went to see it the other day. Two st- Thumbs up, three mm, stars. What we he, look? He's pretty critical yeah. about it in movies. And he he was like, it's good, but it wasn't great. Average. Uh, Zombieland, part two. No. Nah. No. And last countdown, no idea. Final countdown? <laughs> no. Maybe so. I don't know. What so anyway, that's are. what's going on in the box office, Hank. Maybe we'll try to see the Joker here in the next couple weeks. Okay. Anything else exciting going on in your world? In Trent? my world? In your world. Well, the World Series. That's big in your world. That's huge in my Talk world. Okay. The the, the greatest thing about that is good pitching always beats good hitting. Yes. Always. Yes. And we had some of the best pitchers going, like in the game. And, you know, they're Hall of Famers. Right. You know, I mean, we got some great ones. And um, to, to go down 2 0, lose both games at home, at home, and then go to Washington, you feel pretty comfortable. We're not going to, we're not going to pull this one out. Right. Then to win three on the road. Is pretty amazing. And I'm pulling for the Astros. Yes. I like the Astros. I like Washington. But the only reason I want Washington to win is because I want to be able to look at Bryce Harper Harper. in the face and say, you suck. You do not like Bryce Harper. I do not like him. Yeah. Okay? And they can win it without your $330 million. Yeah. But um, I like how blue-collar the Astros are. I like Altuve. I like Bregman. Bregman's great. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, I I think that that is probably – and that's really important that they won three in a row away. And now you have Verlander going on the mound, who's never won a World Series start. Right. Which Hall is of Famer. I believe yeah. his career and what he's done never won a World Series Hall start. Hall of Famer, without a doubt. Easily. Without a doubt. But maybe top 10 pitcher of all time. We'll put a cherry on the top of his career if he wins this game tonight. And I know you're not a betting man, Hank, but. Right now, Verlander is a minus 170 favorite wow. to get it done, wow. which means Strasburg is a big dog, plus 140. Got to take Strasburg on that one. All day long. All day, man. I'm behind. It's going seven. I think it's going seven. Strasburg is the man. I mean, barring – he had a bunch of injury. I mean, yeah. he would have gone down as one of the greatest pitchers ever if, you know, he just struggled with injury. Mm-hmm. Um, but he is sick. Yeah. Sick. Um, but, you know – They've, there's just a bunch of good ones. Will you stay up? I know you typically t- typically would go to bed during the week at a decent hour. Yep. Will you stay up and watch the World Series? I definitely will. Will you, Harris stay up with you and watch it? Uh, depends on like what – like he'll, he'll watch most of it. Yeah. If it's a blowout, yeah. I'll tell 99. him to get to bed. But, yep. you know, if it's close, I'll let him. Because, you know, we were, we we're trying to get season World Series tickets and we try – you know – my thing is experience. I want I want him to watch it and then talk about it yeah. next year when the World Series is going on. You, you remember how crazy that game was? Yes. I, I want that kind of sure. that thing to go on. But uh, I'll definitely stay up, and I'll definitely I'm definitely pulling for the Astros. Yep. Well, I'll be up, but rooting against you because I'm going with the Nationals tonight. But you know what? You know what I I think here. Let me let me ask you a question. Yeah. This is and this isn't um, pointed in any direction. Sure. If you're a gambler, mm-hmm. and year in and year out. You lose. Yes. Consistently, let's say. Yes. <laughs> Is there a point where you just say, this probably isn't my sport, I probably need to bow out? No. No. I think you, no. I think you push no? through. You push on through. Because this is how Vegas was built. You know yes, that. I know. You don't, you don't leave a chips, winner. All the chips in. Okay. Just throw them on I there. just wanted to make sure that we we're on the same page. <laughs> why, why are you asking me this question? I'm just asking because... <laughs> I've talked to you about your winning prowess, and I don't think you've been winning all that much. I'm good at a lot of things in life, Hank. Really good. 
Gambling, not one of <laughs> not them. One of not them. one of the top 25 not things one of I them. do. Yes, yeah, yes. I'm sure. But anyway, it's a lot of fun, though. You know? I'm sure. Pretty good. So we'll see how we do after this, you know, with our gambling tips, okay. tips here. Well, next. So if it goes game weeks. seven, who are you rooting for in game seven? I, well, I think I'll be rooting for the Nationals again, but I think the Astros will win. Yes, in game seven. But just game six, I'm pretty confident. Altuve is pretty amazing. Yeah. To do what he does is pretty amazing. To be a power hitter at his size is amazing. Do you want to hear a story about this man? You already, you might already know this. So a couple uh, scouts mm -hmm. ran this little thing in Venezuela for all the kids just to come. They were like, go to Venezuela. You know, they go to the countries, Central right. America, and there's a, tons of great baseball players there. And so they went down there. Altuve was like 13, 14 years old. They had cuts the first day. He got cut. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in his mind, you know, he always wanted to be a baseball player. That's the only thing he ever wanted to do. But in his mind, he was like, I got cut. I might have to do something that's not baseball. Whatever you get, however, whatever job you could get in Venezuela. Right. I mean, he's planning it. I don't, he wasn't much of a student, you know, or anything. The next day, they only invited the people that made it to the next cut. Well, he changed. He said he wasn't Altuve. He changed his name. And the scouts didn't know much. One scout picked up on it. And the other scouts weren't even paying attention. But he went up to him and he was like, I know, I saw you yesterday. And Altuve was like, please, just let me play. Mm -hmm. Right? So they let him play, whatever. They signed a couple of these young kids. But told the, that one scout said, um, man, I'm going to pass your name forward. It's not because I think you're a really good baseball player, but you got so much spunk and you got like you will not take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. Well, anyway, he got a shot, and once he got a shot, he never looked back. Right. I mean, he never looked back. He could be in Venezuela right now. Who knows? I right. mean, milking cows. What else do they do? Digging, in Venezuela? digging, digging holes, digging ditches. Yeah. yeah. But he would not say no. He was not. He would not let his dream die. And that one scout gave him the shot. And then boom, he just took it from there. Yeah, he his dad. His dad said that every time he would come home from work, his dad, ever since he was little, let, like could stand and throw. Yeah. He would meet him at the front door every day with a ball and glove, and he'd mm -hmm. say, "Let's throw." Let's do it every day. And, wow. he, and Altuve said, his to his dad's credit, he never said no. Yeah, he threw with him every day. And you know they they were talking about him going to his home field. It's like a little field near his house. Mm -hmm. His dad would go out there and throw BP to him, one baseball. He'd throw it, hit it. it. He'd go back to the fence, go get it, come back, throw it, hit it. Altuve said the only problem that he the the problem that we'd have is there was this like industrial building beside. He's like, if you fouled one off and you put it on the roof, then you had to go figure out where you're going to go get another, another ball. Baseball. Unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, stories like that, you know. Determination, dedication, it's unreal. Unbelievable. And yeah. his success is, I mean, good for him. Yes. I mean, you know, you worry about it. kids coming out on the. A soccer field or a baseball field or a basketball court, and they've got six thousand dollars worth of gear on. Right, uh, Mariano Rivera. He made his. Uh, he had an interview before his Hall of Fame speech, mm -hmm. and they were saying, um, you know, what was your first glove? And he was like, it was a cardboard. It was cardboard. And they were like, mm -hmm. well, I have cardboard and a knife here. Will you show me how you do it? And he, it took him like three minutes. He, he cut it, glove. cut it, put his hand through it, and he's like. That's oh, all we need right there. And he's like, you know, that's all we needed. We didn't need a yes, glove. Yes. We need just a piece of cardboard. And the love of the game. Mm. That's what you need, Hank. Let's teach these kids in this draft tomorrow we get a team. Philosophies. Philosophies, yes. It starts with hard work and teamwork, Hank. Teamwork. I hear you. Um, Buddy. It's done. I'm all tapped out. Okay, I mean, it's I done. I gave it 110 today. Uh, you should have. Yes, I needed you to make up for the last two weeks missed. You should have. That's yeah, that's but, good. Well, yeah. we're glad to have you back. Yeah, glad okay. to be back. Glad yes. that we're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. Hope you have a wonderful Halloween. Yeah. Do you like how I just took that over? <laughs> Did you feel it? I heard Absolutely. I heard the wind come out of your like, sails right what there. What's happening here? Yeah, I yeah. but I, I think you're, uh, you're able to be back on the team. <laughs> All right, I'll well, let you back thanks, on the Cap. Thanks, Cap. I appreciate that, and I'll look forward to talking to you in two weeks where we'll, we'll sum up our wonderful Halloween festivities and get ready for my favorite holiday of the year, Thanksgiving. Uh-oh, I feel a brother-in-law sighting. Oh, you know it's coming. You know it's coming. Well, anyway, big fan listeners, so glad to be back. We'll talk to you in two weeks. Peace.